most famous searcher in history was the 16th century Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon. Leon joined Christopher Columbus in 1493 as part of the renowned explorer's second trip to the New World. Let's rewind to when Ponce de Leon was born in Santa Vaz de Campos, Spain in 1474. Growing up to a penurious yet noble family, de Leon served as a page at the court of Aragon and eventually came to seek fame and fortune as a soldier. Upon hearing rumors of Christopher Columbus's discovery of a new world in 1492, de Leon volunteered to go on a return expedition the following year. After months of traveling through treacherous waters, de Leon and his crew finally landed at a beautiful island called Hispaniola. They eventually encountered the Indians that inhabited the island, and most of them were violent. Their encounters often ended with bloodshed because of the brutality of the Indians and the superior weapons of the Spaniards. Many of the Indians also exchanged diseases with the Spaniards. The native people of Hispaniola had never encountered the severe diseases that they were already immune to. The 2600 nautical mile run from Gomera in the Canaries to Dominica in the Leeward Islands was a sailor's dream, running hard before the trade winds for 21 days. On Sunday morning, November 3rd, 1493, Ponce de Leon awoke to the cry of land. On shore, 12 naked Arawak women and two boys presented themselves and managed to explain that they had been captured by a Carib raiding party. They had been taken from their home on the island of Borinquin and brought to this island as booty to be used sexually and possibly even to be ritualistically eaten. In the Hispaniola area, there were two major groups, the Arawaks and the Caribs. The Arawaks were considered uh, more friendly, not as hostile as the Caribs. The Caribs had quite a reputation for being fierce warriors and even cannibals, although it's questionable to what extent they cannibalized their victims. This was in part a justification of the Spaniards uh, to, to enslave them. So much in the New World was mysterious. You've got to remember that Ponce de Leon landed in Florida barely 20 years after Columbus had discovered the New World. So if we want to put it in current, um, in a current context, he was closer in time to the discovery of the New World by Columbus than we are presently to the, uh, to the first landing on the moon. Ponce was one of that tough and ruthless new breed of men who carved an empire for Spain from the previously uncharted lands of the New World. The Spanish called them conquistadors, conquerors armored sword-wielding mercenaries on horseback, seeking profit and adventure for its own sake, risking their lives for gold and glory, striving to meet the impossible standards set by El Cid, the legendary hero of their Castilian epic, who began the crusade to drive the Moorish conquerors from Spain in the Middle Ages. New World Con In 1502, De Leon was serving under the governor of Hispaniola, Nicolás de Ovando, and after hearing reports of gold on the northern island of Puerto Rico, de Leon explored and settled the island. He also founded Puerto Rico's oldest settlement, Capara, near present-day San Juan. Then, he returned to Hispaniola and was named the governor of Puerto Rico. However, he was later removed from governorship because of political rivalries. According to Peter Martyr, a writer at the time of Ponce's expeditions, de Leon learned about an island called Bimini where there was a mystical fountain that could rejuvenate those who drank from it, also known as the Fountain of Youth. Although the quest for the Fountain of Youth was probably influential to de Leon's explorations, his primary motives were most likely the search for gold, conquest, and more conversions to Christianity. In November 1511, 51-year-old Don Juan Ponce de Leon formally applied to the King of Spain to mount an expedition to the islands north of Puerto Rico. With surprising help from Bartolomeu Columbus, Christopher's brother, and over the objections of Diego Columbus and religious leaders who protested Ponce's treatment of the Indians, the king granted Ponce's request. But there were conditions. Ponce would have three years. The expedition would be at his own expense, and as a concession to the church, each settler would be required to teach at least one of his Indians to read and write. The islands to the north would, at the very least, provide a fresh new source of Indian slave labor. But they could also hold the still rumored and as yet undiscovered cities of gold. No one knew for sure what treasures these islands might hold. Peter Martyr, a chief chronicler of Ponce's age, reported rumors of a mysterious fountain. 
Martyr had written, At 320 leagues from Hispaniola, those who have explored closely tell of an island named Boyuca or Agnano, having a celebrated spring, whose waters, when drunk, old men are rejuvenated. Unknowingly, rather than the island of Bimini, Ponce landed on the coast of North America on a site near St. Augustine and named the region Florida because he discovered it around Easter, which in Spanish is Pascua, Florida. He then returned to Puerto Rico and in 1514 was awarded the title of military governor of Florida. Juan Ponce de Leon set sail from Anasco Bay in Puerto Rico on March 3, 1513. He journeyed northwest along the Lucayan Islands, now known as the Bahamas. After 11 days of traversing the Lucayans, he came to the northernmost charted island, the one known today as San Salvador. Here, on an island that had been discovered by Columbus, Ponce de Leon resupplied his three ships and resumed his own quest. On March 27th, off the island of Eleuthera, Ponce de Leon and his crew turned westward and sailed out of sight of land. They were crossing through what we know today as the Strait of Florida. They had no way of knowing where they were with no land in sight for six straight days. But one of the things that troubled them as they passed through this body of water was the fact that they had trouble keeping a westerly course. They were pushed north and they were carried farther north than they were able to shoulder their way west. That was, of course, the Gulf Stream, or the Florida Current that they had encountered. The current carried them north, pushing the ships toward new territories. The historic discovery took place during Easter week, April 2nd, 1513. He is regarded as a national hero in Puerto Rico. And there, the biographers for, all oh, the last uh, 50 or 60 years have written enthusiastically about him as the first conquistador. I mean, he was the first settler. He was one of the best navigators of the Spanish main. He was a military engineer. He built a massive fort and an accompanying city. He made plans for an accompanying city with streets radiating out from the uh, fort itself with plans for a hospital, a church, a jail, and a city hall. In all, when you consider his accomplishments, he was one of the most versatile and talented of all the conquistadors. Juan Ponce de Leon's explorations of North America in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, encounters with the native people of Hispaniola, and exchange of diseases and goods with the Indians of Florida, shaped the culture and rising economy of the New World.